Can you tell me why do you think it's important to make sentences that make sense? Why can't we just say them any way we like? My name's Nicole Rodder. I am a Grade 1 teacher at St Anthony's Primary School, which is situated in Melton South, which is a low socioeconomic area. The school has around about 300 students and a lot of those students represented at the school come from different cultural backgrounds. In today's professional learning team, I would like us to have a look at four children that I've identified as having really low oral language scores. And what I'd like to do is look through the data that I've got. I've got a record of oral language, a writing sample and a running record as well. One of the members of the professional learning team is Jen, who is the other grade one teacher. I'm hoping out of the professional learning team that she will learn how to look at student data Data, and then from that student data create a plan for your teaching to then go into the classroom with the student data being the focus of where your planning should come from. We could look at what are they actually doing well with their oral language, what strengths do they have and then from there what are the main challenges that they seem to be having consistently and then from there we might be able to identify some goals and some strategies to implement into the classroom with the PLT log. If I give you a different child's data each to have a look at and then maybe if we can have a discussion about what you're noticing mm -hmm. and maybe if we start with some strengths that you see that they have. Many of the sentences, although incorrect, they still made sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they could follow most of the basic sentence okay. structures at the level one area. Okay, yeah. yeah. I have that on mine as well. In level one, I'm, I'm getting the same mm. sort of thing. Yeah. So there they're still areas. retaining meaning. Yes. Or well, they so might substitute words like old for new. Yeah. And then there are the ones also that don't make sense, like mm. the blue flew to the top of the tree. I jumped into the ocean and I saw. It starts with a person, I, and then the place that I jumped into, what was that? Isaac? To the ocean. Into the ocean, that is the place. If you were to look through their other samples, is that consistent through that? So in their writing or their running records? Yeah, I've got one here too. This child has, um, the sentence is, that's a good picture. And she's actually left off the apostrophe S, yeah. so it's that a good picture. It seems like a common issue is them not understanding how it's supposed to sound in English mm -hmm. and that needing structure. that modelling mm. and that structure mm. and that repetition of hearing it all the time. So I'm going to read the sentence and I want you to say it back to me exactly as you hear it. Can you watch my mouth, please? I jumped into the ocean and I saw... I jumped into the ocean and I saw... From the challenges... Are we able to identify a goal for these children? What would you say would be the main thing that they need to grasp before they move forward? The understanding of what a sentence is. Yeah. Improving their sentence structure. OK, can we just have a look at these? This breaks down the different levels of the ROL, so maybe if we look at that more basic level, it can really tell us what the children aren't understanding and we mm. might be able to articulate that into a goal for the kids. I think in the professional learning team we were able to identify exactly what the children are having difficulties with in their oral language and then from there work together collegially to develop a focus for them, a real goal for them and then strategies to implement into the classroom to hopefully reach that goal and I think it was really good having Jen there to hear all of these ideas and hopefully she can implement some of those things into her classroom to eventually improve her te teaching practice as well. How do you support colleagues to interpret internal and external assessment data? How do you support colleagues to modify their teaching practice in relation to analysis of assessment data?